people who got fired for the stupidest reason. What happened? I started working in a place a month or so ago, and at first it all seemed cool. It was an outside bar, and my job was primarily at the pizza station, stretching and shaping the dough, topping, slicing, and garnishing, as well as taking the pizzas to the customers most of the time. On top of that, I did seem to lend my time to the other stations, like the bar and floor, whenever I could, as they were at times very unstaffed. That and the incompetent management made it unbearable. The event that led to me getting the sack? Well, one day I accidentally read the wrong number on a ticket indicating the table number. My bad. Not something that happens often. It didn't help that the table I took the pizzas to by mistake accepted them, even though they didn't order any pizzas between the three of them. It was only when I took a third and final pizza that they questioned whether the third pizza was theirs while already tucking into the first two. I thought nothing of it and carried on. Thirty minutes pass and the table that was meant to get the pizzas flags it up and we realize the situation immediately. We bang out the missing pizzas in minutes. I personally go and apologize to the table and the table that accepted the pizzas agreed to pay for them. At this point, I didn't see any further problems. Everybody had a happy ending. I misread the ticket, I knew what I had done, and to be honest, I felt pretty stupid for it. What didn't need to happen is that the supervisor is a middle-aged woman trying desperately to grasp onto relevance by butting in conversations and trying to one-up everything you say, but also being super insecure about her authority, so stamping her feet to enforce it when it simply isn't necessary to come over and make a scene. She runs over after everything is sorted and rambles on, Listen, calm down. Read. Yes? Super loud, super condescending in front of a full garden of customers. I didn't know what to say at first, so I sort of just did the thing where you kind of just laughed to fill the silence and said okay. But she didn't think I was taking it seriously enough. Bearing in mind, at this point I'd estimated delivering almost a thousand individual pizzas to their correct tables and not made a single mistake. To me, it very much seemed like this woman was making stupid mistakes every day. She comes back moments later, slightly more frustrated, and is still talking to me like a child. I respond calmly and say that I'd prefer if she didn't talk to me like she just did in front of the customers. She storms off again. At this point, I'm cooking a pizza and she's getting extremely aggressive, showing teeth, very animated, trying to be intimidating. I stick to what I said, disagreeing with her notion that she's my boss and can pull me up for something if necessary, but my point was that it wasn't. I try to argue this, but before long I realize my attention has been diverted from the pizza oven for too long and the pizza I was cooking has started to catch fire, rendering it useless. I'm visibly annoyed at this, because it's a waste of product in my time. Again, she storms off. Not before long she's back at the absolute peak of anger, making an absolute scene for the sake of her ego. I simply say, I think she should have this chat after service, don't you? Looking at her dead in the eyes, knowing that I would be quitting or fired before I got the chance. She had such an emotional reaction that she had to go and sit in a dark room for ten minutes, leaving the floor so only one person was seated and taking out drinks. They sent me home and asked me to come in for an interview about it the next day. I never returned. Story 2 I had a manager write me up for not attending a meeting that she scheduled on a Sunday night because I was out of town. I'd written my request on the calendar she used for time off and she approved it in writing on the calendar. I got back from my mini vacation to find they'd implemented a few new practices that I wasn't aware of. I called another store to see if someone could explain one to me and got a snotty, if you hadn't skipped the meeting last Sunday, you'd know, followed by a hang up in my ear. I went to the office, looked through a few papers on the desk to see if any instructions were there, and found those along with a write-up for an unexcused absence for the meeting. I immediately took a picture of that, took a picture of the calendar still hanging on the wall that showed my request along with the approval, and waited. When the manager showed up along with the district manager, I was called into the back room. The office was too small for three people, and read the riot act for skipping the meeting. I was presented with a write-up, which I refused to sign. When the district manager asked why I wasn't going to sign it, I showed her the photo of the calendar that had the approval written on it. The manager went and got the calendar, which now had convenient wide-out marks on it, and said she'd revoke my permission two weeks earlier, when the meeting had been scheduled. I then showed the district manager the timestamp for the photo two hours earlier. I was sent back to the sales floor while the manager and district manager spoke. A short time later, I was called back in when I received the crappiest apologies I'd ever heard. A few months later, the manager left the HR file drawer open, and since there were no cameras in the office, I looked at my file. The write-up was in there, along with the worst forgery of my signature ever. I, of course, took a picture of it, and when I left the company for good a few months later on four hours' notice, I included that picture with the email I sent to every major office in the company, detailing all the cruelty and misbehavior of the store manager and district manager. The company was dissolved by the parent company a couple of years later, and while I don't know what the district manager is doing, I know the manager is working for a card company as an assistant manager at a much lower salary. Story 3 I got fired for taking time off when my first son was born. Yes, for the birth of my son. I took a job at this place after my last place notified us the day before Christmas that we weren't coming back after Christmas. Yes, oof. My wife was pregnant when I took this new job. I notified them during the interview that I would need time off four months down the road for the birth of my son. I reminded them at least twice a month. No problem. 
A problem, they said. Two months in, they gave me a nice raise after seeing me consistently pull 140% productivity over their usually highest productive staff with no safety violations. Three months in, they start laying the night shift off despite being in the middle of a large building expansion. I started working 12-hour shifts, which often included 16- to 20-hour shifts to cover the staff they let go of. I kept reminding them I would need time off. No problem, no problem, they said. The time was near. I reminded them yet again a few weeks prior. They said if I took the time off, I would be let go. I told them they should have thought of that before laying everyone else off. My son was born. I took one day off for the birth. One. Single. Day. I called in several hours before my shift. The day I returned, I was ready to work. The manager sat me down. He told me his boss said he had to let me go because I defied orders not to call in. You're lost, I said. He tried to apologize. I told him not to apologize because I knew he didn't mean it. I wasn't going to let him soothe his guilt. He either didn't communicate to his boss or he didn't care to defend my position. The silver lining, I got to collect unemployment for six months while I spent time with my firstborn son. I also made sure to thank the company on numerous occasions for it. They tried to deny unemployment too. I won on the appeal because they had a bad track record of automatically denying unemployment requests and losing the appeals. Story 4 I worked for one week at a locally owned coffee shop as a teen. During my interview, it was obvious that the owners, the manager interviewing me, and the staff were very religious. I didn't grow up in a religious household, but it didn't bother me at all to be around devout Christians. I was a very peppy good girl type, so people assumed I was a conservative Christian anyway. Anyway, I was prepping some stuff in the back on a busy weekend, and a couple co-workers were talking about mission trips. I didn't have everything to add, so I didn't join in the conversation right away. One of them turned to me and asked me if I ever went on a mission trip, and I responded that I never went on one, but they seemed pretty interesting. They told me that it's easy. Just go to my church and see what programs they offer. I responded that, unfortunately, I don't have a church. I've never been to church before. They were like, oh, okay then, no worries. I went back to their conversation. The manager overheard the conversation and called me into her office. She fired me on the spot, saying I didn't fit in. I didn't give any further explanation or examples of what I did wrong. I was devastated because I had no idea what she was talking about. I knew she was a bit of a nut, though. In my week of being there, she'd say stuff like, Oh, you're planning on going to a liberal arts college? I tried that once, but I couldn't stand the professors that forced their views of evolution onto their students. Did you know Darwin retracted his theory on his deathbed? That's how I know it's false. But she's the manager, so all I did was smile and nod. To those thinking, you should have sued or reported them. Yeah, I was 17 and didn't even know that type of discrimination was illegal. Story 5 I was in college and waitressing at a restaurant that was open all night. The manager refused to make the schedule so that those of us in college would only work the all-nighters on days we didn't have class the next morning. He didn't give a damn if you had class or not. He would still give you an all-nighter. On one such schedule, he gave me two all-nighters in a row on the days I had 8 a.m. classes. My shift was 11 to 6, so I would get home just in time to shower and go to class. So I worked 11 to 6, went to class from 8 to 9, then 11 to 1, and then went home to study, eat, and try to catch a nap. That night, back for another 11 to 6 shift. Home to shower and go to class at 8. I had a break in class from 8 to 1 to eat and study. Then we had a 3-hour lab from 1 to 4. I went home, studied, ate, and fell asleep at about 6.30 or 7. I didn't wake up until 11.30 because I'd slept through my alarm. They called and said I was on my way and I was sorry I was late, but I'd not slept more than 6 to 7 hours in the last 48 hours and I'd overslept. The manager fired me over the phone for using lack of sleep as a reason to miss a shift, and he was tired of listening to us college kids whine about all-nighters. I had never complained once about my overnight shifts and had never been late, not once in my six months of working there. I had started in May and was fired right near Christmas. It turned out he found an excuse to fire every single college kid that worked there and that left him with only four waitresses and a scramble to find new ones. However, a huge portion of the workforce was made up of college kids and word had gone around so that he had to settle for really old ladies who refused to work overnight and only four waitresses that would. It sucked to be him. Hey there, seems like we're already halfway through. If you've been enjoying these outrageous stories about the workplace, like and subscribe for more related content. Story 6 I worked at Best Buy in the mid-90s when I was 16. I worked selling computers and I was pretty good at it. We also sold things like memory and hard drives that were behind lock and key. Part of our job was to take the tagged inventory from the trucks and put it on the shelves. This included said memory. So I close one night, put away all the new inventory, lock it up, and hand the keys to the manager. They do their checks in our department and we leave for the night. The next day I'm scheduled. I go in and the loss prevention manager says he has me on video stealing memory. I laughed and said, show me the video. Well, I'm somewhat tall, have red hair, and I'm white. The video he shows me is an older, very short white guy with a shaved head. He told me that it was me and that I was fired, and he only showed me the video once and immediately turned off the monitor. Being 16, I didn't know any better. I said some things on my way out and I left. It turns out the loss prevention guy and his son were stealing for years to the tune of over $250,000 and the guy in the video he showed me was his son. 
Anytime problems popped up with missing inventory, they just fired a random person to keep the attention away from themselves. When the police arrested them, their house was loaded with televisions, computers, and everything from the store. Story 7 I worked at this hotel doing afternoon and evening shifts and two overnight shifts a week. They listed the following reasons for letting me go. I claimed I was leaving property without clocking out because I wasn't on camera the entire time. The date they said specifically was an evening that I spent cleaning up the meeting space because it was slow. I was also not the only front desk person on shift. When working overnight, I would sit in a chair to do the audit from midnight to 3 a.m. Sitting on a chair at the front desk was not allowed, even at midnight or early in the morning. Also, when working overnight, I had to fold linen so I could listen to the radio or music through a Bluetooth headset while folding and cleaning up the back. That was also not allowed, even at midnight or early in the morning. They honestly probably just didn't like me. But after they fired me, I went and got a new job at the hotel next door, started making a lot more money, and was able to do all the things I was let go of. Story 8 In my first ever proper job, I was a Christmas temp at Argos. I got fired for not being able to hit the completely ridiculous sales targets they set for me, with zero training. 20% of the sales I made had to be from the insurance we offered and appliances. The fact that I had zero training in their stupidly complicated till system? Tough crap. If he only sold toys, cables, and batteries that day? Tough crap. The fact that the insurance we offered was worthless crap, especially when compared to the warranty larger items came with, plus the fact most people have home insurance? Tough crap. The manager was a raging witch and would pull me into her office every couple of days to tell me how much of a pathetic disappointment I was. After about two months of my four-month contract, she fired me, claiming I was one of the biggest letdowns she'd made in hiring. I later found out that number one, regular permanent staff were not scolded or punished for not hitting the crazy high target but celebrated if they did. Number two, the store was about to close down. The manager had been deliberately picking on me in the hopes I would quit, and when it didn't quit, she fired me. Because if she hadn't, she would have been obliged to find me a new position in another store and she couldn't be bothered because I was a teenage temp. Basically, she was just a lazy, nasty woman and made it my problem. That's the worst job I've ever had to this day. And it knocked my confidence for a while. Everything does when you're a teen. But I still thank that ugly bag of bones every day for a very important life lesson. 99% of companies don't care about staff. And 99% of managers will happily mess you up to make their life a little easier. Story 9 I worked for a professional moving company. I can't slander or name drop for another year as per my signed contract, unfortunately. I got a concussion on the job, through no fault of my own. The person who loaded the truck booby-trapped it accidentally. Essentially, they loaded the truck up as we were unloading it. No one knew what was behind these towers. Mattresses, hutches, etc. As we moved a mattress, its metal bed frame slats fell and hit me in the head, giving me a concussion and whiplash. None of my coworkers were the most wonderful part of that job, thought it was funny. My managers, however, did. I was ridiculed for getting a concussion, the subsequent constant sickness from it and the constant pain in my neck. They joked about me behind my back to my coworkers who subsequently told me. I said things when I had gone the concussion initially that were stupid and incoherent, which I did not. I was going to a chiropractor to help alleviate some of the tension in my neck, appointments they knew about. And I was told that because I was leaving work 15 minutes early to make it to an appointment like I had been going to for weeks, I was receiving an unexcused absence from work. So the next day I was called seven times wondering where I was for my shift. I said, oh, I thought you might have been confused about what an unexcused absence is, so I'm showing you right now. They did not like that. But karma is a witch because the manager who made fun of me had a stroke, and the boss of the company who issued me the unexcused absence got a pretty nasty flu along with his wife. I still have neck problems to this day. Story 10 This happened three weeks ago. I was a project manager for a residential home builder new to the area. The company was from a different state. I am the first PM to build the first houses for the division. Naturally, they make a lot of changes from the original plan sets. It's pretty common that either the plans don't shake out in the field as they do on paper or that the design team wants to change things anyway. It happens. But all those changes impact the schedule. Rework, rip or replace things, material changes with the back order, etc. My direct boss has been giving me positive feedback for the last year. I managed more projects and square footage than the other two PMs combined. Yet we all get paid nearly the same. But in my annual performance review, the EVP of Ops gives me my review instead of that of my direct boss, which he didn't do for the other two PMs, and tells me that I'm slower than the other two PMs because I went first and I'm the one to discover the issues with the houses. Then I tell the other two PMs how to avoid those issues and setbacks, and that now I'm under the gun. Many of the reasons he lists are literally made up, not real or so immaterial that I question his competence. I tell him I'm shocked and have no idea what he's talking about. I can prove it to him with emails and text messages. He disagrees. Three weeks later, I show up to the site and I'm working, and he has my new boss fire me. Pretty much everyone is shocked and confused as to what happened. I just got another offer a couple of days ago from a better company with the same pay, working on better projects. Story 11 During my senior year of high school, I was working at McDonald's. 
It was right after Christmas and we were really busy. I'd been there for four hours, had two to go, and was supposed to get a 30-minute break. Since we'd slowed down, I asked if I could have a break. The shift manager said no one was getting breaks. I said, thanks a lot. And she told the assistant manager that I told her to get off. He fired me on the spot. Wouldn't even let me give my side of the story. A week later, I was working at Jack in the Box. I was a shift manager for six months. Did that through a couple of years of college. Dropped out. Never wanted to go anyway. Moved up to assistant manager. And then a couple of years later, general manager. I remember how crappy I was treated at McDonald's and made sure I treated my employees well. Had the third lowest turnover rate in a 95 restaurant region. Had the second highest average hourly pay and had a number two profit improvement. Take care of your people and they'll do the same for you. Thanks for joining me on these unbelievable tales about crappy management. If you'd like to dive into the flip side, watch What's the Fastest Way You've Seen Someone Get Fired? Story 3 is just bizarre. See you there.